I'm a man of substance. Because I'm the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. I am excellent. Because I am the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. I confess. I'm a joint heir with Christ. The world is mine. I declare that all things are mine. Then start using what you got. You said, devil, in the name of Jesus, take your hands off my money. There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. He'll hear you. Then don't go back and say, we don't know what's happening. No. Don't, don't change. Don't change. Don't, don't change what you said. Don't start talking defeat and hardship and all that kind of stuff. No, no, no. Don't talk like that. Don't say, all oh, these people are frustrating us. No, 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 no. Not me. Amen. Say, then take your hands off my money in the name of Jesus. I belong to your word. Don't forget, he's the God of this aeon, this system. You see it? So there's a monetary system in the world. And Satan, through his kids, run that system. All right? So they can try to frustrate your money. But you're not under their system. Are you seeing this? Yeah. You're not under that system. That's why he said to give your tithes. Because that connects the money you get from the world to the kingdom. That's why you give your first fruits. Because he said, if the first fruit be holy, sanctified, removed and set apart for God. He says, the lump is therefore what? Holy. So the angel of God comes in and says, devil, get out. Why? He says, this man ties it. He ties it on this money. You cannot touch it. Your tithe is that connection. Your first fruit is that connection. You bring him into partnership. When they brought the sacrifices into the temple, once it got into the temple, nobody could touch it again. Now, it's an amazing thing. Look at this. A man took his sacrifice. It could be in the form of gold or silver. It could be in form of even a living animal. He took a ship. All right? A ship to the, to the priest. When he gave it to the priest, once the priest received it, he, that man, couldn't touch that thing anymore. It suddenly became God's sheep. An amazing thing. The gold became God's gold. What does that mean? It means the temple, the house of God, sanctified that gold. It sanctified that sacrifice. It sanctified it. When you receive, you sanctify by giving God his tithe, giving God his first fruit. That sets you apart from the system of the world. So what destroys their money cannot destroy your money. What destroys their business cannot destroy your business. Plus that, he gives you wisdom that the world cannot fathom. He gives you wisdom, he gives you direction. Only the Spirit of God can tell you, do this, this way, when everybody knows, everybody knows, you get it? Everybody knows that doing it this way will certainly land you in failure, that this is the right way to do it. So everybody's doing it this way. And the Spirit of God says, uh, 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 do it this other way. And everybody raises their eyebrow. You're stupid. How can you go in that direction? And all of a sudden, everybody's going in this way, and bam, things go down. And you say, ooh, and you are still riding. You remember Adam, the Bible says they didn't have no clothes. They weren't covered by anything. Somebody said they were covered by the glory of God. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Why didn't they know that they were, when you say covered by the glory of God, do you think there was a light around there? No, that's not what you mean by the glory of God. What is the glory of God? It's the presence of God. The presence of God is here, but you're not seeing no lights. All right? So, why? Did they not know that they were naked? The Bible says they didn't know they were naked. And physically, they were naked and not ashamed. How, how come they didn't know? And how come later on, when they did what God said not to do, they found out that they were naked? What happened? Because, you see, they functioned from their spirit. The Bible tells us that the voice of God came in the cool of the day. That's the way God used to visit them. He didn't visit them walking with man and man. You know, God walking like this and Adam moving beside him. And shaking hands. Say, how are you God? And say, Adam, big power. You know. That's not what happened. The Bible says it was the voice of God. 
He says, the voice of God came walking. The voice of God. So, it had to be because God is a spirit. And man is a spirit. So, it had to be Adam functioning from his spirit and relating with the voice of God. Ma, 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 ma. You, you, you getting this stuff? The same way, the same way, you relate with the voice of God when he talks to you. Sometimes the Spirit of God talks to you from outside you. And you hear that voice. Sometimes he talks to you from inside you. Because now he lives in you. You understand? But you relate with the voice. Not the shape of God in the form of God. Somebody says, huh? How did God sound like? What does he look like? They want to know by this ear and with these eyes. These are the senses. But there's a spirit that recognizes God. Now when man sinned against God, his spirit ceased to dominate him. 